this is Fuzz Face Reviews and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Anyways, as you can see, today we'll be looking into the latest Netflix offering based on the comic series from the Philippines. Filipino, 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 Filipino. Now, I will be reviewing this solely based on the series and not the comics because I haven't read it yet. I'm sorry, guys. Like, okay, I'm sorry to diehard fans, alright? I'll get to reading them when I can, when I have the time. And the money. Maybe. Okay, let's just get right into this and let's talk about Tresse. Uh, mm, sorry, I think my American kind of just slipped a little bit in the accent. Anyways, let's talk about Tresse. The show is set in the Philippines in which the mythical creatures and deities of the country exist and have integrated themselves in some shape or form to society. The story focuses on Alexander Trece, an enforcer of the balance between the natural and supernatural aspects of this world. And if you're wondering if that sounds familiar, it does. As to my knowledge, the character was inspired by DC's John Constantine and also Batman. And maybe a little bit of Hellboy. But I digress. The animation is good at times, there are moments when it does feel kind of stiff or janky. And there are times when characters are in a vehicle and the background does feel lifeless or repeat the same frames. Oh, but don't worry, it's not another Berserk situation, trust me. Or Attack on Titan Season 4 if you want to get technical. The animation also complements the country pretty well with a lot of detail towards the infrastructure, architecture, and geography of the locations. And in terms of the design for the creatures, they're pretty spot on to a point, showing both distinct quality as well as still being close to accurate to the descriptions in real life. Yes, they do exist, shut up. Also, I think it's a good time to mention to folks that the animators of the series aren't based in the Philippines. Yeah. Do with that what you will. But anyways, how's the story though? Well, it's fine, I guess. I mean, it's pretty entertaining and you don't have a hard time following what's happening with all the plots as they are presented to you. Although, as that is the case, the story does suffer from a really disjointed pacing problem as well as a lack of proper development. For the first half, we do have some proper world building of the story, as well as some hints of what's to come for the overall plot. The second half though just seems to rush towards the ending, which in itself seems to just try and unpack as much information as possible before the end of the season. Throughout the show though, mostly the first half, we do get these different segments or rather cases that could have been given more time and become full episodes on their own, instead of having two mixed into one episode. This case becomes clear in episode 2, most especially. Now, obviously this is due to the episode limit of being 6 episodes for the first season, and that's okay, I mean the first season of Castlevania had 3 episodes and the next season had more than that, so I'm sure that would be the case for the second season of Trece. But, despite all that, I do hope that they would fix the way they let the story play out because honestly, it feels more like a series of moments all glued together. It becomes more obvious once you reach the end where almost nearly out of nowhere twists and turns happen, plus a massively overlong villain monologue that's supposed to reveal and explain a major plot detail that we do not ever feel like there were any hints of in the first place. Honestly, it's a mess, and I tried to just make myself like it, otherwise folks would probably hate me for it, but it's kind of true. But again, referring to Castlevania once more, they could salvage the story and develop it more in the next season. God, I hope they do. Now, with all the fiction that this show does present, it still does give us some harsh realities that are pretty much present in the real world, especially in the Philippines. And yes, we are going to be going a little bit political over here. So if you're the type that doesn't want to talk about the social commentaries, or just wants to ignore all the political aspects of this, or just doesn't want to get triggered for some reason, I don't know. You can just skip past it, like, to this part. Or up here. Wherever it is, I don't know. Now, uh, let's talk about how the show presents some harsher realities of the Philippines. For all of the monsters the show presents to us, none is more apparent than people. Human beings who would at times go so far as to becoming monsters themselves. In this day and age of the country, corruption is at an all-time high and some powers that be do tend to abuse the authority that they're given. And one would wonder if this show would, or rather, should address that. 
Well, they do address it, and they're better off for it. There are moments where the show doesn't pull punches when calling out injustices happening in the Philippines, most especially when it comes to law enforcement and how most would conduct themselves with suspects. It's also strange that it came very timely with the recent cases of police brutality or unlawfulness in the country, which, whatever your political alignment is, it's quite hard to ignore. Not to mention how corrupt officials would make shady deals with less than desirable individuals for the sake of power and greed. I say all this not to bring down the image of the country, but to give some perspective, especially to those who are not from here. Let me explain. For a long time, people from other countries tend to see the Philippines as more of a retreat or a tourist attraction, but most of the time, never really being fully aware of what's going on. And it comes as a big surprise to them when they do find out about it, especially online. For a while, a lot of Filipinos tend to wonder if their voices are being properly heard by people from other countries, especially since we hear and see all that happens to them, specifically with the US. Now, I could see this series as a sort of doorway for more people to become a little bit more educated and more aware of how things are going here, even if it's just on the surface level. Minus the mythical creatures roaming around, that is. But that's just me, okay? Now, before we get into the next part, I want to give some sort of uh, a disclaimer. I am a Filipino-American who was raised in the Philippines. Yes, my first language is English, and my second language is Tagalog. But I have been getting a little bit better at it recently. But here's how that is relevant to the video. See, the show was mainly promoted in two versions, both an American dub and a Tagalog dub. And by God, there has been some debate about that in particular. Firstly, it's not uncommon for there to be different dubs for a film or a TV show. For one thing, the option to have different languages does offer a lot more people some more options for relaxation in terms of when they're watching a film or TV show. And you know, that also applies to which one they're most comfortable with, and you know, that's just part of the business. Secondly, it's important to note that the original source material was written in English and a little bit of Taglish. Like, I actually made a mistake online where I referred to the original source material as being written in Tagalog. And you know what? That's on me. That was my bad. My mistake. I'm sorry. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about the dubbing. The show is mostly talked about regarding the twins, Crispin and Basilio. Wait, 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 no. I, I messed that up. Um, okay, no. The show is mostly talked about regarding the English dub and the Tagalog dub. A lot have thrown a fair share of criticism to both dubs, each with their own reasons why. But let's start with the English dub. Well, I could say that they did do a pretty alright job with portraying the characters. They did allow their personalities to shine well enough that it does kind of make up for the atrocious accent at times. Yup, let's talk about the accents. Yes, they took the choice to try and incorporate the Filipino accent as they're saying their lines, presumably hoping to stick closer to the roots. But honestly, for the most part, they should have just stuck with an American accent because by God, what is that accent? Sometimes, some of the actors do manage to convey a proper accent and dictation, but most of the time it just sounds either more Mexican and Latino or just a poor attempt at a stereotypical Pinoy accent that someone tried to recreate after watching one too many Jokoi videos. <sighs> and man, there are quite a few times that the American accent does slip out, especially when some would pronounce Filipino words or phrases. This appears to be the case at times with the voice of Alexander Trece, this version being played by Shay Mitchell. Her performance wasn't bad, I think she did a pretty alright job all things considered. I do see that she did try to strike a good balance of being stoic but at the same time cold in her approach which I assume works well for the character. The only jarring aspect is whenever she'd say some words in Tagalog or say some Filipino names. This is definitely the case when she recites the ritualistic words in Tagalog that just feels as though she's reading it off the script rather than it coming off naturally. But with that being said, I do hope that they do learn from this for the next season. So that was that for the English dub. Pero ngayon, punta tayo sa Tagalog dub.
Okay, well, for one thing that the voice actors did is a great job despite having a script with dialogue that seems a bit too formal at times. If some folks would think they just did some advanced Google Translate or, you know, just based the dialogue off the of comics and try to integrate all of that in Tagalog as best they could. Instead, it was nice to hear some local talent bring their best to the series. But with every professional voice actor, we have one who's a bit new to the game. Yeah, the biggest buzz the show got during its marketing in the Philippines was the fact that Liza Soberano was to play the title role of the series, lending her voice for the Tagalog version. That in itself caused a lot of discussions from people saying that they should have gone with a professional voice actor to saying she's not fit for the role due to her accent at times, to the fans just happy to see Liza in the series and waiting to see what she could bring. Let's be real though. The major reason that one could assume she was cast was first and foremost a marketing and business strategy to draw in more audience numbers. Now if that paid off or not in their eyes all depends on how they read to what the audience has been saying online. Personally, I think they should have gone with a professional voice actor but I was willing to give Liza a chance. Then I watched the Tagalog version and well... I wouldn't say she's terrible, but there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. She did try her best to capture the stoic, sometimes emotionless nature of the character, but it felt flat at times and didn't quite feel like she was Alexandra most of the time. And yes, there were times when her American accent does tend to slip in a little bit, but hey, who am I to judge? Minsan nangyayari din sa akin. Now, I'm not blaming her, okay? I feel like she did the best that she could with what she was given along with the direction she followed and that I believe applies to both versions. It's not really the actor's fault, so to speak, in how they portray their characters. Yes, an actor's performance and skill is important, but it also needs proper and engaging direction to really give the best possible outcome. But honestly, let's try not to dwell too much on the negativity and the cons that this show has. Again, I am hopeful that this can all be remedied by the second season and we should support that. Let's just hope that the creators learn from this and use the criticism in a constructive manner. And maybe even hire some more, you know, Filipino animators on the team. I'm just saying. So, with all of that out of the way, honestly, I still like the show. Sure, it's not perfect, but at the same time, that doesn't mean it's completely bad. This show holds a lot of promise, and I am looking forward to how much they're going to expand upon it through the next season. But if I may, I just want to say something else. This show is much more than just being, you know, a Philippine product that is, you know, released on Netflix. That is an entire message right there that is so hopeful to so many creatives in the Philippines who want to branch out their works to other countries and not just being stuck in the Philippines. Now, I'm not saying that there haven't been any Filipino works that have gone outside of the country. No, 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 there are. It's just that to the general audience or the mainstream audiences, they're not really aware of it or they don't give it enough recognition. And in a day and age when a lot of Filipino creatives right now are admiring the works of K-dramas or the works in American films or TV shows, this is the perfect time for them to branch out to more avenues of entertainment and as well as audiences. Because for years it has always focused on the local demographic because it would seem the most relatable to them. But we've seen with Tressa that you can have something that is so relatable to the local audiences yet still very digestible to outside audiences. Now again, this is just totally my opinion about it, but I can see a lot of good things happening if people play their cards right. Now, I think I'm getting ahead of myself, you know, there's just my, you know, spitballing, whatever. But to end this video, I think I'm gonna give it 8, 8.5 out of 10. <coughs> oh, shit. Going mong 6. I'm keeping that. Anyways, Bobo. this has been Fuzzface Reviews, and... 6 out of 10. Yeah, I'll see you next time.